Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about electric vehicle sales because they are currently going through another boom right now. Before we get into this video though, as always, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And then if you wanna see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Let's get into it. Electric vehicle sales are currently booming right after they just went through a pretty big rough patch at the end of last year. It seems like the whole EV fad is what some people will call it ended and well, that's not reality because EV sales are up again on the new car side of things and on the used car side of things. With new EV sales, it's estimated that there's going to be about 1 million new electric vehicles sold in 2023. Now, this is in a sales year where we're probably going to see about 15 million new vehicles sold in total. And so that means that EVs are going to have a market cap of about 7%, which is an increase. This is the largest that we have ever seen since EVs were initially released in the US market. And so EVs are not necessarily taking over, but they are gaining share within the US market. And if you're wondering, in terms of sales figures for the first quarter of 2020, Three, there was about 225,000 new EVs sold. And this is up quite substantially from quarter one of 2022, where they had less than 200,000 units sold. And so again, you can see that EVs are gaining market share and they're also increasing in overall volume on the new car side of things. And this leads us into talking about the used EV sales because they're also increasing. So used EV sales increased by about 32% in the first quarter of 2023. This comes from Cox Automotive. And on top of that, EV values have also increased. And so wholesale values of EVs increased by 3.7% year over year compared to the average used car, which has declined by 2.4% year over year. So most cars on the used market, right, are in or have been in decline over the last year, whereas EVs, well, they did the exact opposite, which frankly is quite surprising because of the whole Tesla situation. We'll talk about that a little bit more later in the video. But what the data shows is that EV prices on the used market are right around $43,000 for the average used EV. And then on the new car market, it's just under $60,000. And so there is not only an increase in volume, but there's quite a bit of pricing power because the average used vehicle is less than $30,000. And then the average new vehicle is less than $50,000. So EVs are not only more expensive on the used market and on the new market, but on top of that, they're, again, they're increasing in volume. So it's pretty crazy. Like people are willing to pay more for EVs, at least that's what the data shows. So before we answer the question of why there is currently an EV boom, I wanna talk about why this boom is so perplexing. So at the end of last year, there was a huge pullback with EV sales, both on the new side of things and on the used side of things. Obviously we had all the interest rate hikes, which pulled a lot of people out of the car market in general but EV sales just died. And a big part of that was just weather conditions, right? We had a horrible winter. And so a lot of people were dealing with EV issues because of the cold, right? Charging was an issue. And, you know, cars just had so little range that they weren't really drivable in the winter conditions. And this was obviously very public. Like I made videos talking about this. A lot of other people talked about it as well. And so this pushed a lot of people out of the EV market. And I can tell you anecdotally on my YouTube channel, I noticed a huge shift. So like, all of the cars that I review, right, I'll, I'll kind of pay attention to like how well they do in the short term and in the long term. And I noticed with the EVs at the beginning of 2022, the views would just be really good right off the bat. And then they continue to be good throughout the rest of the year. At the end of 2022, whenever I'd review an EV, basically the videos would always be what YouTube system calls a 10 out of 10, where it was my worst performing video out of the last 10 videos. And then I'd look at the video down the road and it still wouldn't get that many views. And so it was like, not only was my audience just not interested right off the bat, but people weren't really searching up that car after you know the fact, right? They weren't searching it up long-term like they were prior. And so this kind of showed that like there were less people looking to EVs. Now, I can tell you that anecdotally, I'm still not seeing a lot of interest in EVs. Like when I review a brand new like release with any sort of just traditional ice car or hybrid, 
the videos do really well, but if it's a plug-in hybrid or if it's a fully electric car, the views just aren't really all that strong right off the bat. And then on top of that, long-term, the views aren't really um, solid either. It seems like there's just not as many people like Googling or you know doing the YouTube search with electric vehicles or these plug-in hybrids, which again is fascinating because again, the numbers show that the market share is increasing and the volume is increasing, but for some reason, the research trends aren't showing. And so I, I wonder if this increase is sustainable or not, but let's dive into that now. So this leads us into, well, answering that big question, why are EV sales currently booming? And well, on the new car side of things, I think it's pretty straightforward. New EVs are now more affordable, whereas most new cars are not. And the biggest reason as to why these new EVs are more affordable is because of the revision with the federal tax credit system, right? Now, you know, Teslas, for example, can get that $7,500 tax credit. Now, the thing to note is because it is a tax credit, it is a deduction off of the taxes that you already owe. And so unless you owe $7,500 or more, you're not going to get that full $7,500 credit. But the thing to note is most EV buyers tend to be in the higher income brackets. And so they have a higher chance of being in a situation where they might owe $7,500 in taxes or more. And so they're more likely to be able to take advantage of that tax credit. And so I think that's the first part, right? The tax credit has made EVs more affordable. And frankly, with Elon Musk doing the huge price cuts with Teslas to make it so they fall within the price ranges of this new federal tax credit has made them even more affordable. So it's like the MSRPs went down in 20, the beginning of 2023 with Teslas, which then pushed all of the other automakers to decrease their MSRPs. And then you got the tax credit on top of that. And so EVs are significantly more affordable today than they were just, you know, at the end of last year. And a lot of EV buyers kind of knew this. And so I think that a lot of EV buyers were like waiting on the sidelines, waiting for the new credit to be released before they went and purchased a vehicle. And obviously, that definitely paid off for those buyers. Now, there are obviously a lot of EVs that don't qualify for the tax credit, but a lot of manufacturers have basically just released discounts that are equal to the tax credit. A good one uh, to talk about is Hyundai with the Ionic 5. There's like, a, I don't know if the rebate is still going on, but I know that Hyundai had a rebate on the Ionic 5 that was $7,500 off. I'm not sure if it was least specific, but I just know that you could get a $7,500 rebate on the Ionic 5. And so they're doing that to make it so that it would be, you know, similar in price to like a Tesla or a Ford Mustang Mach-E that, you know, I, actually the Mach-E, I think, no, it does. I was going to say it does qualify for the tax credit. Anyways, vehicles that do qualify for the tax credit. And so again, that just added to the new EVs being more more affordable. Now on the used side of things, it also makes sense as to why the volume is increasing because well, as new EV sales increase, used EV sales are also naturally going to increase as well because well, all these new EVs are eventually going to be used EVs. And as the used car market fills up with more and more of these used EVs, well, they're eventually going to find buyers for those vehicles. And so it's, it's just a supply thing, frankly. And so as the new EV market continues to expand, just expect that the used EV market is going to continue to expand as well. But the one thing that I will say is that's a huge uncertainty point is going to be valuation on these used EVs because right now they're really expensive. Again, the average used EV is way more expensive than the average uh, used car, right? By like well over $10,000. And, you know, I think that that makes sense in the short term because, well, in the short term, right, EVs are more reliable than ICE cars because they have less moving parts and so they're just cheaper to maintain. But in the long term, right, once those batteries go bad on EVs, that is a huge, like that's a big cost with the EVs. And so I'm thinking that there's probably, unless, unless there's fundamental changes with battery technology, there's probably going to be a huge dip in these EV values in the coming years once a lot of these EVs start to age out, once they need their batteries replaced, because it's going to be a situation where I'm sure that battery availability, because it's already difficult right now, is probably going to be even more difficult in the future. And so between battery availability and battery pricing, it'll probably be a situation where the battery will be more expensive than the car itself. I mean, that already happens to hybrids. There are a ton of hybrids that basically just get crunched because the battery replacement is more than what the car is valued at. And so you're going to see these EVs naturally get crunched. So that would obviously bring down the values. And so I think it'll be interesting to follow, you know, the resale value of these EVs, not just over the course of a few years, right? Over the course of, you know, five, 10, 15 years to see what they are worth. But let me know what you guys 
think about the recent increase in EV sales and the increase in market share as well. Do you think that this is sustainable or do you think that this is just a little blip where you have the group of people that like EVs that are just going and taking advantage of the new tax credit and then after that it's going to die off because, you know, the EV, you know, world here in the US is just always going to be just this small niche market. Interested to hear about that. I'll see you.